all right hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel so in this video we want to look at the concept of integration all right so you recall that we've talked about differentiation which is the process of taking the derivative of a function for instance if you have f of x to be equal to x squared so when you take the derivative of this you are going to get 2x okay so now what is integration Integration is just the reverse process of in, uh, differentiation. That means, how do I, you know, uh, turn this 2x back to get back my x squared? So the process of getting back the function that gave you a particular derivative is called integration. All right, so for instance, now it is written this way. So if I want to now get back the function here, x squared, that gave me this 2x, so I will write it this way, the integral of 2x with respect to x. Remember, you differentiated it with respect to x. So if you want to get back your function, you would have to integrate with respect to x. Where this sign here is the integral sign. And then uh, your 2x here is the function you are differentiating, which you can call f of x. While uh, your dx is now what we call with respect to x. That's a variable x, okay? So the implication is if I write uh, integral of 2x, maybe dt, it means I am I'm integrating, sorry, with respect to t. But of course, this is not where we are going, okay? So now, for instance, if I differentiate x squared, I will get 2x. And if I differentiate x squared plus any constant, let's say 5, I will also get 2x because the derivative of a constant turns to 0, All right? So now that means if I differentiate or integrate, sorry, 2x with respect to x, what I'm actually going to get is going to be x squared plus a constant c. So we call this constant an arbitrary constant. We don't know what the constant is. And so we just represented, we represent it with what? An arbitrary value c. Okay, so this type of integration is called indefinite integration okay so and when you now know the value of your constant or when you are asked to find the exact value of your integration we call that what uh, definite integration and when we want to get the value of c we are giving some some value some extra information for instance i can ask you or one can ask you to integrate y equal to x squared uh, where you have y of 0 to be equal to, let's say, 3. This thing means that your y is equal to 3 when x is equal to, x is equal to 0, sorry. Okay, so that's another way to write this. Okay, so now to do that, after you have done your differentiation, you remember, sorry, your integration, you remember that after you do this integration, you're getting back your function, which is y. So this thing actually means that y is equal to x squared plus c. And so if you now want to get your c, you are going to use this further information given here. And so you're going to say my y is 3 when my x is 0. That's 0 squared plus c. And so which then means here that your c is equal to 3. And so if you plug it here, you are going to now get that your y is actually x squared plus 3. And of course, if you differentiate x squared plus 3, you will still get 2x. Okay, so that's how to get this other constant. So meanwhile, whenever you do it, an integration, after you've gotten your value, you will always attach a constant. See, we call this the constant of integration. All right, and then the next thing I want us to look at is what we call... Uh, Okay, so we have standard integrals. So these are just the common functions we have to take their integrals and how their integral functions are going to look like. All right, so we recall that we uh, they are just the reverse of all the derivatives we have taken. We recall that when we did the derivative of x uh, y equal to x raised to power n, we said that y derivative is going to be bring down your n multiply by x raised to power n and then subtract one. Now, so when you come to integration, you just do the reverse of all the things you did here. So that means if I have my f of x to be equal to x raised to power n, and I want to take the integral of this, that's integral of f of x with respect to x, all I need to do is 
remember here you brought down n and subtracted 1 so you start from the last which means you are going to have x to the power n you will add back 1 and then divide by the new for the new power so all of this is just to take the reverse of the process we did and that's how this formula was gotten and recall i said at the end of your integration you will attach your constant what c all right and then what about the second one recall we said that uh, when you have a constant for example your f of x is a constant and you want to integrate it so if you have the, this what it means is that this is actually the same thing as uh, a x raised to power zero so when you do what you are asked to do here which means you should add one to the power which is zero plus one and then divide by the new power which is one you're actually going to get what a x and then you add your what c and then what about the trig functions all right so for sine you recall that the derivative of cos is uh, given as uh, minus sine x okay so if you want to now get the integral all you need to do is to now take the integral of that minus sine x and remember i said that integral is the opposite so what it means is that the integral of minus sine x is going to give you cos x now then you recall that i said that just as in differentiation you can actually bring out this minus sign and if i bring out the minus sign i'm going to have minus integral of sine x with respect to x to be equal to cos x okay so if you now divide both sides by sine x sorry by minus you now have the that the integral of sine x with respect to x alone is now equal to minus cos x and of course you attach your plus c so that's how this was actually gotten and then to get this other one recall that the derivative of sine x is actually equal to uh, cos x and so if you take the integral it will still give you back sine x and that's how we have this you just attach your x okay and then what about that of uh, uh, example 7 here that's the standard integral there let's come from the derivative you recall that when you differentiate a raised to power x if you take the derivative of this with respect to x that you are going to get a raised to power x multiplied by the lean of a all right so now the implication is that if i take the integral of this that is a raised to power x with rest uh, times lean a with respect to x i should get back my a raised to power x because it is just the reverse and so it is actually from here that we got the integral of a raised to power x and how did we do that you recall that lin a is actually a constant just as i said here minus one and so i can actually bring up my lin a out of the integral sign and so i will have the integral of x is a raised to power x to be equal to a raised to power x and so if i now divide both sides if i divide both sides by lin a uh lean a here of course this will take away this that's how i'm going to get that the integral of a raised to power x with respect to x is actually equal to a raised to power x all over lean a okay so that's how we got this and of course you add your what your x and then finally you recall that the derivative of the lean of x gave us one over x and so if you take the integral you will get back your lean x all right so quickly we are going to look at some examples now here it says that we should find or sorry we should determine the following integrals and so the first one here is the integral of 14 x raised to power 6 with respect to x okay so remember what i said your 14 is going to come out and so you are just integrating x raised to power 6 with respect to x and that is surely going to give you 14 now multiplying by the formula of integration you are going to have x raised to the power 6 plus 1 which is actually 7 so let me just do it that way plus 1 is 7 all over the new power and the new power now is 7 and then you close here plus your c of course the, uh, from here now 2 7 will take away this to give you 2 and so your final answer is 2x raised to the power 7 plus constant c. And then here we have 
uh, for the second one, we're asked to integrate this. So when you have, the, so you are going to have three. And of course, when you integrate e raised to power x, you still get e raised to power x, and that is plus c. That's the solution there. And then for example c, we have that we should find the integral of 5 all over x with respect to x. So what's that going to give us? And of course, this is the same thing as 5 integral of 1 over x. Why did I do this? Because I know by standard integral, there is a value for the integral of 1 over x. And that's going to give me now 5. What's the integral of 1 over x? We said that it is equal to what? The lean of x. And then plus what? Constant c. And that's your solution. So I would like to do the 1 of d somewhere here. Alright, so what, do, what are we going to have? Your 2 is also going to come out. And so you integrate sine x. When you integrate sine x, you recall we said it's going to give you minus cos x. And that is plus your constant c, which is equal to, and that is the solution for that. And so if we go over to the next one, okay. And so for example e, all right. So here now you are going to add 1 to the power which is half plus 1, and that's going to give you 3 over 2. And then you divide by the new power, which is 3 over 2, and that's going to give us, of course, by fraction, this is going to turn upside, and so you are going to have 2 all over 3, x raised to the power of 3 over 2, and that is plus your constant c, which is your solution. And then for f, and that's going to give us, of course, you will have x raised to the power minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2. And so you have all over minus 2 plus c. Okay, so, and this is your solution to this problem. Right, so it is just a kind of a review that we are doing with this section. Subsequently, we are going to look at uh, other forms and uh, stronger aspects of uh, integration. Right, so finally, for example, C here, sorry, G, we are told that this is going to be the same thing as 20 raised to the power X all over the lean of 20. And that is plus what? Our constant of integration, C. Right, so quickly we go to the next example. Now look at this one here. It says, now this one is a more definite integration. So we are asked to integrate, meaning that we are giving more uh, uh, information. The implication is that we will be asked uh, or expected to find the value of C. All right, so for A here, so what is this going to give us? That is going to be 4X. Uh, what is this uh, addition? Now 2 plus 1, which is 3. And that is all over that new power, which is 3. And that is plus C. So that means our y is equal to 4x raised to the power 3 over 3 plus c. And so to find the value of our c, we are given an extra information here, which I told you that this means that, remember that y is always a function of x. So when you have f of y of this, it means that your x is 3 when y is 25. They have to write it clearer here. So let's go. So what it means is that... Uh, if I put my y as 25, that is going to be equal to x, uh, 4 times my x now as 3. And that is raised to the power of 3 all over 3 plus c. Okay, so the implication here is that, uh, of course, this x is going to remove 1. Sorry, this 3 is going to remove 1, 3 here. So you just have 2 left. And so you have 25 is equal to 4 times 3 squared is 9. 4 times 9 is 36, and that is plus C. So what it means is that my C is actually equal to 25 minus 36, and that is equal to what? Minus 11. Okay, so therefore, my Y finally is actually equal to 4X raised to the power 3 all over 3, then minus 11. That's replacing C now with its value. And that's your solution for the A part. And so what about the B? The B we are asked is just like the A. 
we are asked to also find the value of i if i is equal to the integral of 2 cos x. So what is that going to give me? My constant remains the same way. What is the integral of uh, cos x? Integral of cos x is sine x. And then, of course, plus your c. Now, look at the extra condition that our x here, sorry, our i is 7 when our x is equal to pi over 2. What that means is that 7 is equal to 2 times uh, the sine of what? Pi all over 2. Okay, and that is plus c. And so what is our, the value of sine of pi over 2? You recall that pi over 2, remember they said is in radians. Pi over 2 in, uh, in degrees is going to be what? 90 because pi in radians, if you change it to degrees, you'll get 180. And so this is the same thing as 2 sine 90 degrees plus C. And so what is sine 90? Sine 90 degrees is actually equal to 1. Okay, so you have 2 times 1 plus what? C. Therefore, our C alone is equal to, if this comes over here, you have 7 minus 2, and which is equal to 5. Therefore, our I that we are asked to find is actually equal to 2 sine of X plus the 5, which is our constant C. Right, and that's uh, all we have for this uh, video, which is just an introduction to integral calculus where we said that it is just the reverse of, of differentiation and uh, we represent an integral uh, with the sign this, which is elongated S, okay? And so we call the function you have here the integrand. Uh, sorry, I, I forgot to say that. This is called the integrand. That's what you are integrating, okay? And then what you have here is the variable you are integrating with respect to, okay? So in subsequent videos, we are going to take our time to look at, uh, you know, the concept of this integration for each of the functions. Because, of course, we'll have functional functions. We'll have what we call integration by parts, integration of partial fra fractions, and, um, and all of that. So please kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, share our YouTube videos. We will see you in our next video. You will see related concepts that I mentioned, the concepts of differentiation in the description below. Bye.